Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Podcast Juice. My name is Michael Dean. I'm joined here with Big Sexy and Sack and Mr. Ant Poo. And today we're going to get into our thoughts, our review of uh, The Greatest Night in Pop, which is the uh, We Are the World documentary that has uh, debuted on uh, Netflix here recently. Um, it's, it's, it's a big thing. At least I think it's a big thing. A, a big thing i think it's a, a very interesting uh documentary one worthy of a uh, discussion and of course there's a prince tie-in to it which i which i know we're gonna get into <laughs> uh, looking at uh some of the uh twitter specifically over the last week and uh man uh is getting is got, getting kind of a little tight out there you know people was feeling some kind of way about the documentary which i understand uh but i'm like man I don't know what's going to happen when the Prince, if and when the Prince documentary comes out, because just want something to just just a mention, you know, people was was ready. So, man, this is going to be very interesting. But, uh, man, let's just get right into it. Um, I want to bring up a little bit here from uh, Time magazine uh, just to sort of set the stage uh, in terms of what this show was and what we're talking about here. So, uh this is from Time. Uh, this is by Olive, Olivia Waxman. Let me give her her props. Uh, 39 years ago on January 28th, 1985, 45 of the biggest names in music from Stevie Wonder to Bruce Springsteen came together at a Los Angeles studio to record the charity single, We Are the World, uh, popular reframe, We Are the Children. Uh, just to jump ahead, it's a, we Are the World was inspired by Do They Know It's Christmas, a 1984 charity single recorded by some of the most popular British and Irish musicians to raise money to end famine in Ethiopia. Uh, the performers were predominantly white and legendary artist and civil rights activist Harry Belafonte thought that top black artists needed to be included in a charity single. Uh, quote, we have white folks saving black folks. We don't have black folks saving black folks, says Lionel Richie in the documentary, paraphrasing how Belafonte pitched the project to him. Quote, we need to save our own people from hunger. He was trying to get us, the younger crowd, involved what was in what was happening in Africa. I said, of course. Uh, Belafonte worked with top managers and producers in Hollywood like Ken Cragen and Quincy Jones to reach out to the featured music uh, stars. They knew many would be in Los Angeles for the American Music Awards that Richie was hosting. So the recording session took place right afterwards. Uh, let's get into the biggest revelation, the biggest revelation, revelation, revelation. <laughs> and the documentary is Sheila E. Who performed with Prince, claiming she was invited to participate because the producers thought Prince would would come if she was there, and she also <clears throat> excuse me, and she explained what it was like to be in the room waiting for a solo. Here's a quote: "It was getting late, and I was looking forward to singing one of the verses, but they kept asking, well, do you think Prince? Oh, well, do you think you can get Prince here?' And I'm like, "Wow, this is weird." And I just started feeling like I'm being used because they want Prince to show up. And the longer they keep me, maybe Prince will show up. She said she knew he wasn't going to come because he'd feel uncomfortable among all these, uh, all those people and called the night heartbreaking overall. Um, but of course, uh, we, we know the song was written by Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson, and of course, was produced by Quincy Jones. And with that, I want to just get right into the actual document documentary itself. Uh, I'm just going to get you guys' sort of thoughts uh, as you watch this. And first of all, before we even get into our thoughts of it, what was uh, your thought of the whole We Are the World that you remembered from back in the day? 
you know, before you saw this, where was your thoughts kind of coming into this? I'll start big sex. Well, uh, again, considering I'm older than both of you guys, I remember it very well. Um, to me, it came across, nobody actually came out and said it, but it came across as a response to what they did over in London with the uh, Band-Aid deal, which was cool. You know, the Band-Aid was cool. Do they know it's Christmas? Yeah, great little song. Had a lot of fun with it. And then a few months or a few months later, you come here comes this massive project. And everybody was at the shrine for the AMAs. And after the event was over, I mean, again, people talk about it now in the documentary like it was a big deal to the general public. We didn't know. We didn't know they were all going over, over, over there to AM to do this thing. No one knew. But they went over there and did their thing and, you know, put together a fun song. And a lot of the duets were really, really fascinating. Uh, a lot of people st stood out. Um, the song could have been better, but it was it was rushed. You know, it was something they had to get out now. And, of course, it sounded great because Quincy is Quincy. One thing I didn't I found unusual was uh, the engineer wasn't Bruce Sweeney, which I thought was unusual. Mm. But, you know, those things happen. Maybe scheduling conflicts and all that. I'm sorry. You're throwing this guy out there and saying it's quite unusual. I need the backstory. Who is this guy and why is it Who unusual? Bruce Whitting? Bruce yeah, Whitting was sorry. Quincy's number one engineer. Okay. Okay. Everything that Quincy made gold, Bruce was probably on it right there next to him. He did like all the Michael Jackson. All the Michael stuff. Mm, okay. 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 And Bruce now that was, resonates with me. Got it. Bruce was that dude. And he wasn't there. So I, I don't know why. And um, it was interesting because people have been taking shots and jumping around a little bit. Oh, why was Sheila there? And why was Dan Aykroyd there? Why was Marlon Jackson there? Okay, but granted, he's Michael's brother. But come on, Marlon. To this point, no one had heard Marlon Jackson's voice. So how was he even in the room? No. And Latoya, I think what? Randy was there as well. Wasn't right. like, uh, wait, 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 He's wait, part wait, of the Jackson's family, wait, wait. so I'm like, the, why not? Did they do the uh, the, the victory tour? Would that already happen or not? You know what? That's a that's a good question. Um, a good question. We have. Do you try on want your body? I mean, come on, that's Marlon J. Everybody knew who the hell. Um, that yeah, ah. the victory tour was from July to December 1984. So yeah, yeah, from the biggest artist on the planet. Yeah, and, and Marlon. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, a lot I'm. Of not, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, never mind. Never mind. I'll, I'll let you finish. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. A lot of people, when it, when the thing came out, <clears throat> you know, you're looking at, oh, I know that person, that person, blah blah blah. <clears throat> but a lot of people were conspicuously absent to me, because when you're talking, you know, the top forty type of uh, listings. Some people weren't there. And that's whatever. Things happen, scheduling, whatever. And then, of course, we all know that uh, a certain Midwestern guitarist got a lot of heat for not going. And my thing is this. He never said he was going. So what are you going to do? Can we get Prince? No? Fine. Keep it moving. That's all you need to do. You know, and the guy who put together was it Tom, Tom Baylor, I believe. Baller. Who put together the order of the of the sequences of the song? Well, we're gonna put Prince here. I'm sorry, have you spoken to Prince? Well, no. But we're gonna put him here. He has he said he was coming. No. But we're gonna put him here. Okay. To be then fair, get... that guy probably has no idea any of that part of. <clears throat> fair enough. He's and then they bring Sheila in, and and Sheila, bless her heart, I was initially gonna rip her, but then you see her on the documentary. What well, the? I was gonna get this thing a verse. I'm like, baby, no, you're not. You're not getting a verse, no. And then they say, look, where's Prince? Can you get Prince, huh? Which is kind of jacked up. So I, I feel for the girl. But overall, it was a... Uh, what? 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 No, I, Come on, Ed. Bring it to me. <laughs> okay. I had this conversation with Mike, and Mike said the same thing I thought. I'm like, Prince... I'm not Prince. Sheila E., we just... she she been in the game for a cup of coffee at that point. Very true. Very true. And 
<clears throat> we're gonna be honest here. When you got Tina Turner, Diana mm -hmm. Ross, Ray Charles, Stevie, um, Huey Lu Huey Lewis, Michael Jackson, Cindy Lauper, she's not on the level of them as a talent. I'm, I'm sorry, as a known talent. I don't mean ta she's very talented, but as a vocalist that you know it's messed up. I, it was game that was running, but I really can't believe she fell for the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> <Right on. laughs> like, I mean, you, it's great to have that belief in yourself that, yeah, I belong amongst them. Yeah, I deserve a verse. But I'm really just thinking, like, you just got here. You really think they're going to give you a verse? Mm. You know, but hey, you know, and speak a shout out to those people that was in her ears and giving her that, giving her that pimp talk, like, yeah, you know, you the baddest, you know. We really don't want Cindy, but you know, we was forced, but we you we really want hey, is Prince coming. Prince coming. <laughs> well, know, I was it, it, to her defense, I would I would add, you know, she was hella cool though with uh Lionel Richie. That was yeah. her dude. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, yeah. I, if was, nothing else, I could understand the argument to say. Because you know how the song creation process goes. Everything recorded is not going to obviously be used. Uh, she probably could have, they could have just let her maybe sing something. Don't mean it's going to be on there. If like if, if I was kind of like really trying to push to gear Prince, if I was one of them, like, listen, let her act. Yeah, let her sing. I let her go first so she can call Prince. And them, yeah, they, they got me on the track. You know, come on down. That don't mean we're going to use it. <laughs> but at least it would have been like, yeah, you actively put in because you Randy he didn't get a verse. You know, the toy brother got a verse, and they were way more popular than you are. The Pointer sisters didn't get a verse. Right. So I mean and they were red hot. It is what it is. But I mean, you so know. it's like when I heard that, I was just thinking like it was like one of those from the uh, how I met your mother. I was like, oh honey. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ain't no, ain't no way, you know. Again. I don't think she she had the vocal range to 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 be featured, and on top of that, she wasn't known to be like giving her that feature. Yeah, no, I, I agree, I agree. But you know, again, they did ask her. To Cold, come. Game. Cold they, game. They they asked her to come. She coming off of doing a nice performance that night, so she of course you know you might be thinking, yeah, Lionel's my guy. Why would he tell me otherwise? You know. I am known to these musicians out here. I mean, I'd be known to the general public like that, but they know who I am. So I, you know, but and that's another thing. Like I, you yeah. said that, yeah. we don't know who the session musicians were at all either. Exactly. Yeah. That's cold. I think too, you know, the narrative that they spin on this documentary, and I feel like it's it's a, this is Lionel Richie production, and of course Lionel is cool with Prince. Lionel's cool with Sheila E. I don't think he try to put her out there to make her look crazy. I think it's a cool sort of story point to have in it, though, that she kind of felt, oh, yeah, listen, I'm going to edit your overall interview, and I'm going to use that little part to make sure that's kind of spotlighted because that's a talking point. But I don't think it was, I personally don't think it was some real malice. Just if no, you right, look no, at no. the overall camaraderie that was going on at that and what they're doing, I don't think they were trying to shit on her per se, but you know, it's just like anything else. We would, really, we really would want Prince to come in. So, you know, we kind of extend. And she knows how the game works. Yeah. That 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 type of thing that she, she figured about, it out. But she figured it out. That's, the game, that's how the game works. Works anyway. So it's not like it was something new, or they shit it on her or something like that. Nah. You know. They shot on her, but no, they didn't do that. <laughs> and one thing though, when you saw all the camaraderie in the room. Uh, one part that stood out to me near the end was when Diana Ross went to Daryl mm. Hall and said, look, you're my favorite singer. Can I get an autograph? Think about mm. that. Diana Ross asking for right. an autograph. And, then, and people saw them <laughs> like, well, shit, let me, get, let me get a Polaroid. And, and they started all doing autographs and pictures. That must have been cool. That must I, have been I, cool. I keep, I'm glad you brought that up. When they started doing that, I'm like, that might be something I'd spend a thousand to ten thousand dollars on if I can get one of those music sheets that has those people's signatures on it. That yeah. would be an amazing yeah. keepsake. That should be either in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or the Smithsonian Music 
I, I don't know if they have a Smithsonian, Smithsonian Music uh, Museum, but one of those sheets with those autographs from We Are the World need to be there on display. I right? agree. Um, well, let's just go through this thing a little bit. So, you know, it starts off by showing, um, again, where the idea of, the, of it comes and sort of the idea that let's get Michael and Lionel Richie to write this thing. And I love Lionel Richie sort of telling the story of going to Michael Jackson's house, <laughs> you know, working on the song and, you know, the bubbles <laughs> and the song <laughs> and the snakes is here. And Mike is just sounds, he sounds so like, I, I, it's just funny listening to these stories about him. Cause I, in my mind, when I think of Michael Jackson, sometimes I think of the superstar, you know, Michael Jackson and all the madness and stuff, but to remind myself that he was really just this super talented dude that was already the man, but he still seems so humble or yeah. like in his own world uh, and not like doing the things you would think a superstar pop star would be doing. You know, he's, he sounds like a kid that just probably just has a gang of money and can just do whatever, you know, but at the same point, <laughs> tasked to do this song uh, in the midst that he's working on bad you know like starting to record the bad stuff but i just there's love the point here about him go ahead i was gonna say there's a point you made we we had a conversation a couple of days ago where you, we were talking about and we're getting to some of the other og motown people but the mm -hmm. interaction between lionel and michael where you know we're looking at it like oh my god these two legends getting together i don't know how they re interact and you know, you, you had to remind me like these are like old friends. They grew yeah, up they on Motown. Yeah. They was putting up. They knew each other. And mm -hmm. like, oh, Mike, yeah, I'm giving Mike. You know, he gonna, you know, like just a couple of catches getting the, getting around each other. Like, yeah, we gonna get to that song. But hey, how how, how them girls out there? You know, just shooting <laughs> shit and talking about music. And you know, we on the outside. Like, man, can you imagine what that was like? But. He telling us like, yeah, we was you know playing with snakes, drinking, talking some shit, thinking about what hoes we gonna get into. You know? It was just like, just <laughs> I, mean, I forgot that part. <laughs> <laughs> that, that part. <laughs> yeah, that that, 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 that that was cut out of the show. I, I saw the the extended uh, cut version. <laughs> you know, and and that and you know that really put a perspective of how these people interacted with one another and really humanized them in a way that you know we look at these gods of music and they're like. Like, like Sam, with the, the autograph thing, they're, I hate to say this, man, they're just like us. Yeah, 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 man. And uh, so, yeah, just hearing about them working together like that and, and uh, you know, the time was ticking. Uh, I totally forgot that this happened during the American Music Awards. And I never really thought about Lionel Richie and what he had to get prepared to do outrageous to do that show yeah and that was like the first time in my that i paid attention where a big star or pop star or, you know artist would host a, a tv show to that magnitude i remember watching i was just like wow i had no idea he was like that or he had a personality um i just never associated him outside of the songs but to see him doing all outrageous and all that kind of stuff it made me really like be a fan of him like man he's like a cool type of dude uh, and not thinking of when you've got to host a show and a big show like that. And this was back when award shows were the main thing. Like they were huge deals and we all watched them. Uh, and he was the host of that. And, and then happened to think in his mind that later tonight, I got to do th I'm doing this, you know, with some of the biggest names of music. Uh, and we have to do it tonight. You know, leading into that, I just had no idea. Did you guys ever think about that? Like, well, know, I, I did, but I didn't think that it was that big of. I'm, I'm gonna make sure I say this right. I didn't think it was that intricate, that stressful, that mm. um, the, the oh, I can't think of the word. It's the scope right of it, you know? yes, the scope, the magnitude. There you go, the magnitude of his. Here's all these stars flying in, probably for a couple of days, going specifically for this award show, which also in, which entailed at that time. This would be one of maybe three times you would see them live. You know, the, the AMAs, the Grammys. I think the MTV Awards probably started popping off. Wow, and, 
Yeah. Okay, so two times a year you would re really see them actually perform live. I mean, yeah, you had American Bandstand and um, Soul Train, but they weren't really, they were given, you know, canned um, lip sync performances. This is really them going out there and doing it, doing the ish. And on top of that, seeing all of these stars in one place on one show performing, I, I, somewhat uh, who can top, can you top this? Or I'm closing the show or nobody's going to be able to follow me, that type of atmosphere. And then, <clears throat> and on top of that, it's an award show. So you're like, I want to win. I want to be up there saying, you know, it's an honor to be nominated with, uh, be a nominee with you other people. But of course, you know, I got the award type of thing. To go from that environment with your peers to then go have to rush over and do this uh studio recording session and you know do it in one night i really didn't get get uh get a grasp of the magnitude of what all had to go into that night uh but i want to do a side note because you know brother got a brother as i was watching the show i can't believe we let that go on some of those category names best black male best black male i mean it's best worship you worship category best black album i was like here's what they think about this call up dick clark his show well <laughs> that one kind of, that when i saw that that really rubbed me the wrong way yeah i know i was just saying uh well we, we choose to go watch it and, and participate so i mean what yeah <laughs> what can you do? I got an excuse. I was only seven, so I didn't know no better. Well, also keep Blame in my mind mama. that keep in mind that you know over the, the years, God, the names on the charts have changed. You know, because now if you look at the R and B chart, now it's the R and B slash hip hop chart. Because R and B has been relegated to life support. And I'm sure in a dozen years or so it'll change again. They all changed. Yeah. And uh, so, you're getting so yeah, you, you know. So speaking onto logistics of getting all of those artists together, you you really get a sense for that by watching this. I have to reach out for certain people who who is going to be at the awards, who was not going to be at the awards. How do we get them here? You know, I love how they talked about Bruce Springsteen. He was on tour, and you know, for those who were live back then. Bruce Springsteen was one of the top echelon artists, period. Like, he was a big deal at that time. Um, so to get somebody on his level to step outside of what he got going on and his style of music, to hear, I, I, I'm assuming he heard the demo or something, for him to be able to say, that ain't my bag, really, but let me go. I'm going anyway. I thought that was big. And the fact that he had to fly snow and all that to get just to get there and, and be in there and like yo whatever they need me to do you know I, I'm good I just thought that was I was like wow yeah because I remember how big he was like, he didn't have to do that the uh you know that part of it is when you start to see some of these other artists that are coming in and it's one thing to watch it now and uh maybe forget the the, the uh the iconicness <laughs> the epicness of some of these artists like these dudes these are legends they was like real legends participating so you can get stevie wonder bob dylan which we're gonna get into uh shit, willie nelson kenny rogers uh tina turner kenny loggins, kenny loggins they're all john oates getting, uh, what are the, these people, go ahead one of the things that i wanted i really wanted to note was um Part of it was, you know, the honor. Uh, let, me, let me take it back. Um, part of it was this was a philanthropic um, mm -hmm. giving type of thing. You know, as uh, Quincy put, check your ego at the door that he put up on a sign as you entered into the studio. It was about putting this together to do uh, public good. And then the, the other part was, is like, you're being asked, how do you feel you look if you don't show up? And that's what, and I think that's what a lot of them had that mentality of, yeah, it's after the AMAs. I want to go out clubbing, go, you know, do whatever artists of that time in the eighties, as I'm sure we could take a guess would do. But instead they're like, no, I can't miss this. You know, you got 
Quincy calling me. It's something from Harry Belafonte. Uh, and it's for this big cause. No, they asked me, I can't, I can't not show up. Right, 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 right. And getting in there, one of the cool things I think we get to see too initially is when they all start to come into the studio and you get to see, oh, it, he's like, whoa, there's him. He's here. That person, she's here. And I left, I can't remember who it was. Someone mentioned like artists can kind of be on some extra shit when they have all their, you know, people oh, around them. Mm, yes, yes, yes. But when you just get them all in the room, all those people had to stay outside and just the artists can come in and let's break bread. Oh, it was, man, I, it's good to see you. Or maybe I never met you or whoever. I mean, to me, that was the part of the documentary. I was just like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. I want to settle in right here, and I want to see this footage of them together doing their thing. That's when it really, I was like, oh, we're about to see something. Like, yeah, I ain't never seen this before with these types of people. And one thing I just want to say real quick, and, and we'll go into individual ones. The way they first show Michael Jackson, I think they made a point to say Michael was the first one there. Uh, and he started recording his parts. And I was looking at dude, and at this point, he is the man. Like Michael Jackson, Thriller had already been out. Superstar, you know, crazy. You know, probably the biggest artist in, I don't know, you could argue he was probably the biggest artist in the world at that time. Um, the fact that he was just in there, and I felt like to me, from what the footage they showed, he just seemed to be like, he did his part, and a lot of times I would think a guy on that magnitude would do his part and be ghost. Like, I'm out. Like, I'm just coming in here. Woo -woo -woo. I know what I mean to this. Cool. I'm out of here. I don't want to stand around and do this. But the fact that he stood there the whole time and when he could help, help. But his presence alone, I just thought, I was like, man, that's something that says a lot about a guy that can still participate. And, and this is nothing. And let me be clear as I know people read this. This is no shade to anybody else. It's not about nobody. Else. I'm just talking about him in the position that he's in. I, I would commend him that he was a part of this and stood there the whole time and, and was putting in work. You know, I just thought that was dope because he was the dude. Like he didn't have to do that. Go ahead. The thing that again, I bring it back to what you talked to me about a couple of days ago when it came with him and Smokey. The, as you speak about that, you know, it's the outsider looking in and uh, outsider looking in and, you know, not being in the industry and whatnot. The thing we got to look at is it felt like nobody else in that room were in awe of Michael. It was just like coming. It's like, oh, hey, Mike, you know, we working with you. It's like I think we feel that. Whereas those artists, they were like, yeah, he's on another level above me, but, you know. Still, Mike to me. Uh, I, I would say some, some of some of them cats was like that. I can imagine, but I mean, you can hear some of them saying, obviously, very intimidated by some of those people in there. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, the old school cats that have been around Mike forever, like, yeah, that's just a little Mike. You know, and there's a the great part where they show Smokey questioning, I think, a line in the lyric or something like that. And they're like, well, who, who? Yeah, Michael wrote that. Nobody else don't want to say nothing. He's like, man, she. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Man, we used to run to get. Well, I see uh, Joe beating his ass. Yeah, get over here. Just, you know, but he did it in love. You know what I'm saying? He it wasn't no chastising, but he was just like, man, we used to write. Man, we from Motown. We 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 done we the blueprint. What are you you know? Yeah, what are you talking about, Mike? It, it, it don't go like that. Go like this. So I think that's dope what? to be able to see that. Yeah, man. One, it just speaks to me that he done put in the work. So those types of cats, they see him as a peer. Like it ain't no, you know, yeah, he he's 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 Michael Jackson to y'all, but Mike been with us since day one, working. So he's he's solid. Like, yeah, he he's a master songwriter, but so am I. I'm a master, I'm a master songwriter that gave him the game. You know, that's kind of what Smokey was basically saying, like, man, please. Let's switch that up. But again, it was with no, like you said, it wasn't no malice in it. Um, big sexy man, you're kind of quiet. What's some of your thoughts on some of the things we've been seeing? You know, you mentioned Smokey, <clears throat> and again, Smokey is a legend in this business, and he didn't get a verse, and he was just there to help, which is cool. You know, which is which is really cool. And um, 
you know, so many people came over. Everybody and Lionel also that night as host. Then as as nominee, he, he took home four or five awards that night. Mm-hmm. And they left it all across the street. Let's go do this. Let's go do our thing and put it together. Um, we're gonna get into are we gonna go like through the who's who? Like, oh, we go to it, go to it all. Yes. Yeah, go, all right, yeah, cool. all, all the way. Cool. Yeah. Um now that we've mentioned this portion about the musicians, I, I kind of feel they got a short change, man. We don't know who they are. I mean Oh, like the actual musicians playing. Yeah. Got because you. I'm sure they could have they could have got again, Quincy could have put together just for musicians. Oh shit. He could have put something together. But don't they show a they show a few little snippets of some of the music? Like if you knew who they are, you'd be like, Oh, they got old boy. Because I they they had uh what's his name? Greg Phil 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 they yeah. showed him for a quick second, didn't they? And then they yeah. showed, didn't they show the brother from uh, Brothers Johnson? Lewis? Yeah. The they, he was playing for a second. I was going to say, they they showed him real quick. You had to know who they are. Uh, but I can understand from a from an editing standpoint, they only had so much time. You got the 40 top artists in the world. Footage, you, you want to show as much as that versus some of these people that the audience may not know who they are. Yeah, which yeah. maybe that might have played to, played into a little bit, but I agree with you. It would have been great to see more a little focus. Let on me it. put on my conspiracy brother hat for a moment. Uh oh, I never seen you put. That oh on. yes, I have to do this. <laughs> um, I took the liberty of looking at the Hot 100 for back right around that date, mm-hmm. and there was a name that was conspicuously absent. Cool and the gang. Interesting. Interesting. They was running shit for that moment. However. Yeah. They were on Band Aid. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Could it be that uh, Ken Cragen and Lionel Richie and the American Crew are like, oh, we gotta do, we gotta top Band Aid. Oh, cool the gang. No, they were on Band Aid. Billy Wiley. No, she was on Band Aid. They can't be on this. Hmm. Hmm. Was that was Band Aid before this? Yes. Oh well, then that's probably why. Like, why would why would they want to do the same? Haterade, thing? man. Haterade. Because then you could have had like the cool little gang cats participate in both and bring a unique perspective that no one else would have had. True, but at the same point, they got Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. <laughs> I mean, they yeah, got all yeah. kinds of titans on yeah, there, and they got Kim Carnes. Yeah, I don't even really. Know who <laughs> that is. She's in the background. I don't. No, she got. She got. She got a couple words. Oh, okay. She got two words actually. <laughs> You say she got two awards? Or? She got two words. Oh, words, words. She didn't get a whole verse. She got two words. That's gotcha. it. But she got them. Hey, and that's kudos to her. <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah. It's embedded. But, you know, where was Aretha Franklin? That's a good, good, that's a good question, too. You know, where was Rick James? And we don't know if these people were invited. But here's the thing: you have forty some plus yeah, already. So they're many. not gonna have. No, they're not gonna have the entire industry. It's just... Exactly. But the thing <laughs> is, you know, there's so many names that we could just come up with names sure. now. Who? Where were they? But one is getting all the heat. Well, that ain't cool. Prince. Oh well, right. Oh, he, one. He's that was his night. Like he he blew up. He went mainstream. He tore it down that night. He was the one of the top selling artists in the game at that point. So, and, one other thing, and you know as well as I do, and I thought about this because someone said something to to key this thought. How many people have actually been in the studio when Prince laid down a vocal track? Think about that. Right. Mm-hmm. None, because he put Susan. Susan, get out. You know, he, he put them all out. <clears throat> So to expect him to sing in front of in front of 40 people and 40 people of that magnitude, and then after the Michael Jackson line, shit, that was never gonna happen. No way, no how. Let me uh add another little thing. I don't know what happened to Aunt Pooh. Maybe he'll jump back in here. Um, but I was looking on a lot of needs to write a book too. He, he's such a good dude, oh. man. He needs to write a book. Oh, there he is. All right, he's back. 
Um, also, I wanted to to bring in uh, it's looking at uh, the website is called ultimateprince.com and salute to them. Uh, they have a nice little write up uh, on this night as well with some more additional Prince information. Um, let's see, where do we begin? Uh, so anyway, it's talking about Prince being invited and says first Prince was known for having strict control over his projects, yada, yada. He always recorded alone and not with an engineer, says Ken Cragen, a music manager who helped coordinate the stars of We're on the Real the World. Uh, he is quoted to say he would go into the studio, do his own engineering and record every instrument and sing and no one else would be there all of a sudden. He couldn't be in a room with his peers. Uh, says another issue was another issue was actually what Prince did and did not want to contribute. Uh, when Jones, and I think this is uh, Quincy Jones, tried to convince the iconic man, the iconic musician, to change his mind, Prince offered instead to play guitar. This did not go over well with the legendary record producer. Uh, it says, in a heated moment, Jones reportedly yelled at Prince's manager, uh, Rob Cavallo, quote, I don't need him to fucking play the guitar. Hilarious. Uh, but perhaps the biggest reason Prince rejected We Are the World was that he simply didn't like the track. Quote, he felt like the song for We Are the World was horrible, mm. says revolution guitarist Wendy Melvin. Explained in the book, Let's Go Crazy, Prince in the Making of Purple Rain. Quote, and he didn't want to be around all those motherfuckers. Uh, That's what the quote said. Fuck all y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the exact reason Prince may have disliked We Are the World is unknown. Though some have speculated that his reported but always denied rivalry with Jackson played a part. Whatever the reason, Prince angered many music insiders by declining to participate. Instead, he sent a track of his own for the tears in your eyes to be included on the We Are the World full-length charity album. Prince's manager recognized that refusing We Are the World could lead to bad publicity. Before the AMAs had even concluded, Cavallo reportedly began spreading the rumor that his client was sick. I vaguely kind of remember that kind of going around. The manager then explained to Prince the importance of laying low, attending awards show after parties while Prince's other stars, excuse me, while music's other stars gave their time and voices to charity would not be a good look. Uh, Prince ignored those words of advice and instead headed to the club on Hollywood's famed Sunset Boulevard. Sometime around 2 a.m., the star's bodyguards would get into an altercation with two photographers who had attempted to snap pictures of the rocker. The incident landed two of the bodyguards in jail on misdemeanor battery charges. So they had one hell of a night. Uh, well, when Carlos and Charlie's and uh, some shit popped off. <laughs> uh, I won't put on the screen, but so salute to uh, Rodney at Prince 360. He had found a news article that kind of goes into it. Um, two prince, two bodyguards of rock idol Prince were arrested outside the West Hollywood, California night spot following an, following an altercation with two photographers that occurred several hours after the American Music Awards. Uh, Deputy Mason Kenny of the Los Angeles Sheriff Department told Jet, uh, Jet Magazine, that the photographers Mike Gostala and Vincent Zerfonti we're in the parking lot outside Carlos and Charlie's at 2.20 a.m. January 29th, apparently waiting to get a shot of Prince when the musician and the two bodyguards walked outside. According to Kenny, bodyguard Lawrence Gibson, who is six foot nine and weighs 300 pounds, asked Gustella for his camera. I think that's Big Chick. He then took the film out. Uh, at about the same time, Kenny said bodyguard Wallace Stanford, shout out to Wally, rest in peace, uh, struck uh, Zufanti in the eye in front of several witnesses. The bodyguards went back inside but returned outside when the sheriff's department responded to the complaint. Gimson was arrested on charges of robbery with bail set at 6000 while Stafford was arrested for assault, bail of 500 
Both were released in bail, or released on bail and were due in Beverly Hills Court March 5th. So uh, that was quite the night for Prince, obviously. Uh, didn't have to end that way, but it did. And things happen when you're going out. I guess, what do you say in the song, Hello? I guess that's what he gets for being uptown. You know, cat, cat's trying to get a little reachy with it. And, you know, uh, Wally and, and Chick ain't playing, you know. Uh, I can <clears throat> I can understand and justify having Chick take. Well, let me let me really say that because we don't know if Prince told Chick to do it. I can right. understand Chick taking the camera, taking the film because it's like, yo, you no, don't do that. But Wally, come on. Can't be putting hands on people. Well, we don't know what situation. We don't know what happened, man. Yeah, we you don't know, know what happened. happened. We don't know what the photographers did. Yeah. While his job was Prince, that's you know. And yeah. and Alan Leeds really broke that down on his interview over on Quest Love Supreme. Mm. You know, because I mean, I didn't know until I heard that interview that it was at Carlson Charlie's, and um, that whole night, you know, Prince said he, he wasn't going to go. And I was like, fine, if you're not going to go, you need to stay inside. It is mm -hmm. not a good look for you to be out doing your thing. And they all hung out in his room, you know, him and the band. And he, he mentioned uh, specifically Bobby Z and his wife. And around 1 o'clock, we'll, we'll get together, broke up. And Alan goes to his room. He gets a call around, you know, 3 o'clock. Uh, we got a problem. You know, what? I mean, then you heard what happened. He's like, oh shit. It was a bad look. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. But you know, one thing I think I, I mean I, I love it that and I totally understand Prince's decision to not be a part of it as much as I wish he was. I can understand why he chose not to, you know, just I mean the way that he works, the way that he created his stuff. It wasn't about being around a whole bunch of people. It was a solitary thing for the most part. That was his get down. And maybe he wasn't ready to be that outside dude. of his element, you know, yeah. like that at that point, you know what I'm saying? To be around these other people like that. And, and you have to respect that, you know, like it's a good thing. I would rather him say, I don't want to be in that than for him to go there and and something funny style happen or something like, or he walked well, out. <clears throat> You know? Exactly. You know, I would hate for him to do something like that. So I think he did the best way that he could do it. And hey, I, I'll give y'all a song and I'll make a video. You know, now again, I wish I would have gotten that Mike, Stevie, Prince, Lionel, Diana, that you know, Harry Belafonte, that would have been a hell of a look. You know, it may not have made it, it would have been a lot more uh powerful years later in my opinion to see all of those cats united for for that purpose then it might might have been at that point when i would have appreciated it but uh i still salute that he even was a part of the project and for whatever reason he, he agreed to do it it's still a good look you know i else. will say i will say you know looking back in the day when i heard about it which for me was in the 2000s when i found out about it i was like yeah that's right prince you ain't you ain't a side chick you the main person you don't you don't come in to do cameos and all that nah you know i was looking at it like yeah he he, he stuck to who he was and yada 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 but you know as i've matured and watching this video i'm watching this uh documentary i think like you know, not a good look. It's not a good look. You were there in the city. They asked you. The elders were in on this. This was from the elders. You know, sometimes you got to put, like like my, QC said, check your ego at the door. You, you got to, the larger scale thing. And what this would have, we look back on this now, like, man, look at all these celebrities, black led it was a black agenda and the fact that prince chose not to be a part of this this is this is a moment in time 
I I mean, you could say never say never, but the way society has moved, the way the music industry has moved, there will never be something like this again. Never. I'd love to be wrong, but I just don't. And the fact that this one moment of time and time was missing, what people would say arguably is one of the biggest Black artists of the 80s, the greatest musician of the 20th century, I'm saying that. It's it's really a lost moment for me, and I wish yeah, he had I'm put have to, push back on that. to do this. And I don't mean, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to demean or downplay his issues because that's the way he worked and his level of comfortability. We've learned, you know, we've learned how what, what his get down is. But I really wish he had participated because of what like, you know. We we all talk about the culture. This would have been a moment for the culture. Again, I got to blow push back on you on this a little bit. Um, yes, he was invited to go. And yes, it would have been a great look had he been there. But let's, again, let's look at it through 1985 lenses. You know, he was notoriously, you know, ambivalent. He wasn't talking to the press. You know, he wasn't doing a lot of things like that. And to have, and then you kind of come at it from the stance of, well, these are the, the heavies of the industry, and these are especially black elders of the industry. Okay, fine. Where is Aretha Franklin? So again, there are so many things we don't know. We don't know if, if she we don't we lying. know she wasn't there. That's we don't we know. know why. Right. Let's yeah, we don't know if she was in LA or where she was. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know if she said, you know what, I can't do it. So you can't really we bring her up. You have no we idea. Don't know. You know, there are so many things. Where was Whitney Houston? You know, we don't was know. Was Whitney by that time? Uh, yeah, Whitney was out. First album was out, yes. Okay. You know, and while you were gone at, you know, Mike and I talked a little bit, bit about my conspiracy brother issue. Where was Cool in the gang? They were running things back then. So now, again, I think he should have been there, obviously. No doubt. He should have been there. And then when I saw in the film, that they tried to get Van Halen, but they were on tour, God knows where. Could you picture that just from a musician standpoint? Yeah, Prince, can play guitar. You'll play something with Eddie. I'd have freaked out. That would have that would have put another eight or nine million copies of the album out just with that alone. Because we want to see that. I have a question. I think, yeah. I was gonna say because he offered to play guitar. <laughs> My thing is, why do you think Quincy said no? And if he if he said yes, do you think Prince would have sh shown? Uh, I think Quincy said no because the song really didn't call for a solo. That's the main thing that I that I see. And if okay. he, had said I, yes, I'll push back on that. As we saw in the documentary, they were changing things up. So you said it didn't call for it, but if you got one of the biggest artists of now. And he's a, uh, a guitar playing fool. Can, you can't but, make that but, change. Do we really see him as a guitar playing fool at that time? Though? At that time, no, we don't. Mm. No, we don't. <laughs> well, I mean, but Purple Rain. I mean, come on. It just came out. That he had wasn't guitar playing fool. No, he wasn't that dude yet. Man. Okay, okay. Well, well thing, okay, somebody who, is, if they can tell Stevie Wonder we ain't doing that Swahili. And he's far bigger than Prince at that time. Yeah, they can tell Prince, who just came up I'll to be the guy, we're yeah. not doing that, okay, boy. I'm gonna be on my Negroid. Uh, that's different because you. <laughs> no, not different. Well, it is different because Stevie Wonder was way bigger than Prince at that time. <laughs> no, no. What I was gonna say is, is like Prince putting in a guitar solo might not be as much uh, effort of, of the larger group. Than trying to get Cindy Lauper, Huey Lewis, cool, uh, uh, Smokey Robinson, and all those other people to try to learn the Swahili phrase. I don't. Well, again, whether or not they're trying to learn it, they did do it. But he said, "Nah, we not." Whoever was in the stop, Stevie, stop it. And my and shout out to since we're going here, shout out to Waylon Jennings. I didn't really. I thought it was hilarious. Cause he didn't he didn't make a whole big scene out of it. He was just saw Steven. <laughs> and the man was like, man, he's 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 still on, me, man. 
<laughs> yeah, he, stood, he stood on MAGA early. He was like, listen, <laughs> y'all not going to mess my base up. Uh, you know, I'm good. <laughs> you know, let them go and do their family slide up. Who's the good old boy? I, 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 so what you said is he... So what you said is he hit the SpongeBob and like, yeah, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. Yeah, he was like, I'm good. Y'all got that. It. He was like, I see you, Bob. Yeah, I, let me know how Willie. All right, Willie. Willie he, call, he, call, he, he, he was he was good, but Waylon, yeah, he, was, he stood on MAGA early. He was like, nah. Oof. Y'all not gonna get me on this. Wait, one. is is he still alive? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, so you want to kind of get back to the, the overall thing. We'll still talk about Prince and stuff, but um, what are some of the more classic moments? Um, Al Jarreau. Al Jarreau oh, had Al. me in tears. <laughs> he was, I mean, I didn't expect that at all. And they were like, yeah, you see him bubbling, bubbling, and he started going, they're like, yo, when they had to have a Whitney, I mean, not Whitney, but Lionel was over there like, Yo, just do the line. Come on, come on. Man. You know, you, well, then I get to do what it's like, yo, no, man. like he was he was having a ball. If I would have been there, I would have been dying. Like, yeah, let's give some give get OG some. Come on, um. like ah man, that was just a good moment to see that. Man. I don't know why I thought that was so good. But he cracked me up. Um, Bob Dylan. The thing with Bob Dylan, and, and that's before my time, you know, I, I showed Bob Dylan respect because I know the magnitude of what it meant when he came out. I understand it. I, I give that respect. But this was at a point where I was so far kind of removed from that after that. And so me just watching, I'm sitting there watching him like he came off almost like I could. I didn't know if he was like high or something or like had he been going through some things and all the rock and roll had caught up. when. He was just in a daze, or if that was just his normal get down. But he looked like he looked like he was somebody who, uh, who used to be the ish back in the day. And they was like, "Yo, won't you come down to the club? You know, all all the in people gonna be there, and we're gonna start doing this dance or this song." And he was like, so out of like, like what singing? What you know? He was just, you know, like he ain't even saying nothing, but he's kind of moving his mouth. Well, world, world, children. <laughs> I was like, "What is he doing?" And it was like, "Okay, you ready to do your so?" Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do my solo. Uh, I was like, "Damn, what's going on with OG?" But what was so dope is when he was like, "Yo, Stevie, man, you mind playing? Sit down with me." And the fact that Stevie got didn't clown, we're just like, "Yo, let me." Let me show you, you. You know what I mean? Stevie was like, let me show you how we see you, man. Like, this is your get down. And just so they him and him too, from before. Yeah, man. Like, and gave him back the game. Gave him back his own. Like, this is how we love you, Bob. We, I got you. And then he was able to go in and do it just like that. Like, remind himself. Like, oh, yeah. And to me, that type of uh, camaraderie between the artists, that's what was dope about it to me. It was like, there wasn't no, that's where there wasn't no ego for a guy like that, who they was like, you could tell they was all kind of bowing down to him, but it was kind of like, why are they acting like that to this dude? Like, it, he seemed like he don't know what he's doing. But they was like, man, you can fall. I got you. Stevie Cotty. We're not going to let you, we're not going to let you get on the track and, 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 and sound crazy. That's what I thought was dope about it. Like, no, you're not going to. We're not going to have you looking bad. Stop it. We got you. Even the top. What was it? You know, it was like it was like Yoda. He ran over to Obi once like, yo, I got you, dog. Let me let another master show, remind you that you're a master, too. Like we got game from you so you don't forget. And I just thought that was so amazing. And really just you got to see like even these cats are from different styles of music. The, the bond of the, the artists, the musicians, and all that was there, man. Like, everybody had each other's back. And I just thought that was dope, man. Like, I, could, I, I was blown away. Go ahead. I want to take us back a little bit with something that stuck with me that started a little bit earlier. Now, full disclosure, 
I was about 30 minutes of my three hour high. So I was watching this <laughs> so messed up and was not taking it serious. So um, I made a bed. Don't, I'm not going to take it anywhere weird. I made a bed watching this. And, you know, everybody's talking about, they're just clowning around. They just got there. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they're doing all that stuff. And they're just talking and shooting the shit. Yeah, y'all still there? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm giving you oh, the okay. floor. Come on, Bob. <laughs> Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. Spotlight. I just want to know if I, if I lost you. And then all of a sudden, they say, so, yeah, we had to remind everybody what they was there for. And all of a sudden, this white guy comes in. They got to talking about the famine in Ethiopia. And I know you guys can't uh, understand Bob, yeah. what it's like to want and yada, yada, yada. He's just going on and on. And I was just sitting there like, God, damn, he just killed my high. And I just had to be, and I just got to thinking again, you know, when you hide, you have these weird thoughts. I know people in that room had to be thinking the same thing. Like, <laughs> damn. Just, it's like, man, you just killed the whole body, the whole mood. But at the same time, I kind of get it. They were trying to be like, hey, this ain't no, this ain't no fun-ish. We here for a mission. Mm. We here to do a job. Stop clowning around. Get, get zoned in. But to me, at home, high as fuck, I was like, damn, why they let that motherfucker talk? And I'm like, I'm trying to vibe to this whole thing. <laughs> and you over here reminding me about famine. Who the hell was care about famine? And, and, and <laughs> ain't it cold? It was a, 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 a white brother from another country coming in, spitting, like, tighten up. Got them all. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> uh, Bob Geldof. Is that his? Is Bob something, right? Bob what was that? Geldof. Yeah, he was kind of he was like the original kind of from my era. I remember him as an activist. Like he, he was out there. Day, yeah. Yeah, he, him. yeah, he was putting in work. Yeah. You know, I don't know if he's a that, that to me, Yeah, to me, it's like I know it wasn't a laughing moment, but to me, I laughed my ass off because I was just thinking, like, <laughs> this man just killed the whole body. I was like, I know they ain't getting that back because they gotta be thinking, like, damn, we gotta sing to save these kids. I forgot that's what we're here for. You know, yeah. and that, and at the same time, that is that's got to be a sobering moment. You know, you you just party, you just at the AMA having a good time. You hear what all these people do a song, and you just like yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they are like, yeah, this is I don't know what it might mean to you, but what this song is gonna mean. That's why we're right. here, and that's the important. So yeah, that that's something I wanted to uh, to speak on. Which I and and I think is great because again, they didn't get paid for this. Uh, there's many of things they could have been doing other than doing that. They could have been out kicking it, having a good time, being a rock star or, or or handling their own business. But for them to come together to help start, you know, stop starvation in Africa, of African kids. I mean, that's some, I mean, they put in work. They, we can talk about the song is corny, and, you know, blah, 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 but they're putting in work. The point of it wasn't about the song being what this and that. The point was we trying to help people and right. you can't take, I mean, that's, and that what, what it's about. I, I, I didn't remember this part, but toward the end, they explained, and I was looking, there was about over 8,000 radio stations around the world that played this song, uh, either at the same time or on the same day. To me, that's crazy. I, and it's all and crazy in a great way, because on one hand, it shows to me what it shows is sure enough they understand the power of music sure mm. enough they understand mm. frequencies and vibrations and messaging and influence and they understand the influence that they have when they say things a certain way or put out things they push they understand the agendas the music industry obviously understands they understood it because that's what they did with that. They know we can put out something that can heal the world and can raise millions of dollars to help other people. They made a choice to do that. Everybody that recorded made a choice to be a part of that. Those people that was filming, I love how Homeboy said, yeah, you know, I got finished filming and did it a whoop de whoop I'm like, let me get my invoices together. I'm like, hey, this <laughs> Quincy Jones, she, you know, he, they were like, invoice, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't tell you, 
Now that's a cold move that they didn't tell him to after it was over. But homeboy, he you know what he did though? He said, you know what? Bet charge it to the game. I got to sit down and watch the legend. You don't get that. Like this is worth it. So I love that. So the whole thing about it is dope to me. Like it just shows we could do some real shit. Now I think too, a part of that, the way I took that song, and that's so funny when they showed the the 45, they briefly show the retail copy. I remember I had that. I totally forgot until I seen that. I remember having that. I remember the graphic design on it. And I just thought it was cool. Michael was on it, so I was going to get it. And the song is catchy, and I knew it, but I didn't, oh, it's corny. Or, you know, you, and I look back, and I'm like, I can see why they probably pushed that narrative of it being corny and where the, you know, who, who's going, who's involved in a, that shit ain't got nothing to do with the reason they did this. And it ain't got nothing to do for all the people that benefited from that. Um, I was back looking. There is a there was a DVD that came out of this project, the documentary. The original documentary was narrated by Jane Fonda and had a lot of the same footage that we saw on this. But the second, Yeah, I was going to say I saw some of that stuff as well yeah, back the in second 85, disc, 86. The second disc of this is Harry Belafonte going to Africa and let me show you where the money went. And for a lot of people, that was a hard watch because you got to see them kids in the situations of what was really popping. But I was like, man, I wish they had showed that again so that we can see when we start to get into all these debates of, well, how come Prince didn't show up? And <laughs> that ain't what it's about. That's not why they did it. And that ain't why Prince made the song that he made. He made it to help people. So that's to me, like, when I think about this whole project, I think it, why well, I think it was dope, because they did it for a great fucking reason, man. Like, they wanted to put out something to help people in the world. And getting caught up in who didn't show up. It, it, hey, man, when, they, when, when people are doing charity work, we don't sit around and worry about, well, who didn't come help? The idea is, well, how much money did we raise for them kids? Or how much did we raise for homelessness? And, well, he didn't show up. They didn't go in there. He was in the club. It is all good. Like, you know, so, yeah, I, I, watching this really reminded me, like, yeah, they were doing some dope shit back then. They was trying to help people as they do today. You know, one thing, last thing I'll say, get off the soapbox. <laughs> I was looking up the video for this song, and I noticed it was at, like, 150 million or something like that. But there's the We Are the World for Haiti. That was a more recent one. And I and that has way more views than this one does. And I totally forgot about that, that that even existed. But I remember them doing it over again with, with newer artists. Um, and Poo, are you trying to say something? Or? No. <laughs> talking to somebody else. <laughs> I'm like, what's he trying to say? <laughs> but um, anyway, um, go ahead, man. Uh, two things. Like one, I've said many a times, you know, do they know it's Christmas time is the better one? To me, it is. However, I, I, I say Sun City. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> well, you I, don't remember that one. I yeah, you I don't remember that. One, no. Okay, I ain't gonna play Sun City. <laughs> yeah, they had oh, Run yeah. DMC. They had the rappers on. You but, they, wasn't, they wasn't gonna be a coon and go to South Africa and do no shows. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. But my thing is, is that ever since I finished watching this damn documentary, this fucking song has been stuck in my head. Yeah. So you can call it whatever you want. What it is is a hit. That's what oh. absolutely what it is. Because I can't get you can't the offers part out of my head for some reason. <laughs> or, or Bruce Springsteen for that matter. It's been Huey and Cindy since Tuesday. Huey and Cindy has been in my head. It's, it goes from Michael when you're down and out, and then go Huey, then Cindy. And she keeps looping in my head. I'm like, God damn, get the hell up out of here. I was watching that Cindy Lopper, and I was like, I was sitting there watching with my daughter. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't pick up the uh Harley Quinn and Cindy Lopper in my mind. I was just like, 
why is it that same kind of talking the way she talks? I was like, that's fucking holy offer. <clears throat> in some man. ways, mind blown, yeah, mind man. blown on that. And my other thing is, I want to go to you, Mark. Uh, I know it would have been tacky as hell, uh -oh. but my thing is, I can't believe nobody asked for points on this song. Nobody asked, for points. and with that, with a, with that, would have you would have got you would have you would have got backlashed out. Your career would have been over. Think about this. Sure um, if you to follow up what Ann just said, think about this. You got all these different, you know, artists coming in. Album comes out on what label? Was it was it was it Sony that, that put it out? Was it Columbia? I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I was thinking A and M, but that might not be right. And the thing is, whoever it was, you had to go <clears> through <throat> all these other labels and jump through. It was A and M. It was A and M. Okay. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, Columbia. It was Columbia. It was Columbia. Okay. Columbia, yeah. CBS. You had to jump through all these hoops. Then you had to jump through all the publishers. Then you had to jump through ASCAP and BMI because they're all on the one recorded song. Nah, man, that's just no. No. You don't want to be that person. Well, do I get my, my taste? No, I ain't no taste. Nigga, damn. Sing a damn right. song. So I'm looking at the liner notes on this on Wikipedia. Michael Jackson, liner when she produced songwriters, producers Quincy and Michael. Do you think they got paid? No. Okay. Not at all, man. No. Okay. First of all, none of them need that kind of money. Exactly. <laughs> That's the first thing. Hey. Quincy and Michael were coming off a of thriller. They were paid. Yeah, they, they were need well them. paid. And Lionel was coming off of um, his second solo album, Can't Slow Down, at that time. Mm. <clears throat> because when Lionel went solo, he blew up. Yeah, he yeah. Woo, blew up. Worst thing the Commodores did was kick him out. Every, that was the worst one they uh, ever made. Mm. Real quick, I'm looking at the musicians and who, who brought up what's Marlon doing there? Who brought that up? Is that you, Martin? That the me. entire Jacks, the Jacksons, not Jackson Five, the Jacksons were all there. I see Jackie, Marlon, Randy, and Tito. So he mm. put he put his he put his brothers on. Latoya was there. Oh, Randy yeah. was there. I think Janet was the okay. only one that wasn't there. Actually, here's my question: Who don't clown? Do not clown. But for 40 goddamn years, I still got to ask the question, who the is Kim Carnes? Oh, here we go. She had a she had I'm a sorry. Minor hit. Hold on. She had two, she had two hits. Her her bigger hit was Betty Davis Eyes, which oh, I know yeah. if you heard it, Betty you say, Oh, I remember that. That's my cut. Yeah. See? You know, so she got a solo, and I'm still sitting. I was like, because I, I saw her and I was just like, who is that? And then in the documentary, there's like Kim Carnes. I'm like, who the hell is Kim Carnes? And how did she get a solo? Well, she, she also covered one of Smokey's songs oh. for a hit. Mm. And plus, her voice was really distinctive at that time. Nice. So, like, stick her in there. And again, no disrespect. That's just a lack of my knowledge. I ought to put in Madonna, but that's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I'm just looking at the, the list of people. Okay, here. here's one of those Mandela effects. I could have swore Madonna was in the chorus. I could have swore she was there. Hmm. One I thing know. I realized when looking at the video, I didn't see that, or I didn't know until I just saw it, that Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac was there. I had no idea he was there. They stuck him there in was the quite a there was a there was a lot of people that's just singing in the chorus type yeah. part. Bet Midler. Know. Oh, yeah. It can be easy to miss. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, man. That's, I mean, Dan Aykroyd. That's, that's still one of those. At least Dan alone. <laughs> no, I, I'm Again, definitely not it's just about it. It's just about being there, bringing your, yeah. bringing your energy to the, to the situation, whether or not you're you know. And again, I'm not knocking that at all. It's just you just feel like, wait, you see all these musicians, these artists, and there's Dan Aykroyd. You're like, it's like oh, one of these is not like the other. Point. No, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was big, but it just it just seems like Dan Aykroyd is on this joint. Hey man, Je now, he, now, he, okay. Here's here's another question I have to ask. When they say they want a solo, I, I, I please tell me out why did they go with Huey Lewis when you got James Ingram and even Paul Simon there? Paul That's Simon, James Ingram does a, they both have parts, don't they? 
James, no, James, yeah, they bought that part. Yeah, you're right. I just saw Jeffrey okay, Osborne okay. was there. They could have pulled Jeffrey Osborne out. They could have pulled out Lindsey Buckingham. They could have a lot of things, man. But I think Huey was, I mean, his voice is dope. Oh, no, right? I did not, definitely not knocking Why wouldn't definitely you have him, him, Huey yeah. Lewis? He was huge at the time. So. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, a great voice. Yeah. I, I wish there was, that's the one thing when I was watching this. And I was like, wow, uh, Bruce Springsteen, Huey Lewis. Those guys don't really exist in music anymore. Not on that level. Like, who was their equivalent? Bruce does. But no, oh, oh, no, 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 I'm today, saying Bruce, those type of. Yeah, they don't. That style of rock or whatever, the white guy singing like that, they, they don't even, they don't have that. As far as I know. I, maybe, what's his name? Sam Smith and uh, what's that other guy? Uh, the one that did, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, if, I, when I, if I think of it, I, I, I'll, I'll bring it up. But I, I, this is one guy, Sam Smith, and there's another one. Like he had, and I, I, maybe I can see where you, they have a, they can have a, a soulful, strong voice if you they Ed want. Sheeran? But they're know, also it's Ed Sheeran. Also, no, they're also rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Heartland, America, rock. But they they are soulful. Like Bruce Springsteen, that was on some shit. Like he was, that was, you you felt that. You know what I'm saying? Same with, same with, uh, well, of course, you ain't my man from Hall and Oates. Oh, you know, you know, they're all going to bring it. But, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he wasn't necessarily seen as a rock type of a performer. No, no. You know what I mean? He was. But yeah, you don't have I, where are them cats at today. They don't. I don't be hearing too much. You know, that, that's that's over. hidden. Say it again. Steve Perry, another one. That's another one. Yeah, like he, 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 he did his thing, man. Now, yeah, Carl, had... though, if you want a soulful cat who's uh, who was melon and challenged, the list starts and stops with my <laughs> man Chris Stapleton. Who? That cat I'm sorry, who? Chris. Stapleton from country. Now, I think yeah. I heard the name. I just probably heard, I can't think of the song he's doing. No, is he from serious. now or back then? He's from right now. That yeah, dude is seriously good. Woo! See, and, and there's and not to say that these guys don't exist. I'm just saying they not in the mainstream top of the game like these dudes were, you know. Um, which is interesting. Like if you did this today. I guess there's many people who you could use today for sure. Actually, uh, there's not. If you think about no, it. They, there are, I but there are. We may not necessarily be into it, them, but I'm, there's a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I've, I mean, because of the way media has changed, television, everything, it's it doesn't have the same, it's not gonna have the same resonance because there's so many goddamn reward shows that we don't even bother watching. Mm -hmm. There's so many you can watch any clip of any of these artists live now at on your phone if you want, YouTube, TikTok. Right. So it, it but won't, if they all if gather them together, all that's the point. I, I still from don't think different that. genres. From different genres. I I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on this and say no, it's it's really not. It's really not. Who would be the it's Michael really Jackson not. in the room? Beyonce. Okay. You, Beyonce. You start with Beyonce, Taylor, Bruno. And then after that, I can't really think of the iconic um, artist. What's, of what's that? What's the one y'all like? Adele? Or... Yeah, yeah, Adele. Adele. <laughs> no, don't give me that. Adele can say. Well, I, I'm she not saying sang. she can't. I, I just ain't never listened to it, so I don't know. But I know I, I hear the name. <laughs> Yeah, listen to rumor. I have nothing against it. Just I ain't never heard it. Uh, that that girl can say. That girl can say. She's 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 a reincarnation of Tina Marie. Yeah, Tina Marie. Yeah. I, I don't think she can sing her, but you know. But yeah, I, I really don't see you them put those people. four on on anything. And the thing is, you get those four in. Okay, they say yes. Now, if you're another artist, you're like, I'm not going to sing on that. <laughs> they get blown away. No, thank you. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, that would be like somebody saying, I don't want to sing against Michael or Stevie and them and get blown away. They they all they were there was some intimidation, obviously. Huey Lewis oh, yeah. didn't speak on it, but they delivered. Like you, you gotta you gotta go in the room. That's the whole point. Like 
Okay, and also there a couple years ago there was a video circulating around of uh, that scene where um, Michael Jackson is teaching Huey Lewis the the solo, mm -hmm. and then Cindy Lauper. They they tried to make it seem like Michael was displeased at their performance, the way the looks that he gave them. I hope. And you know, we, I got to check a lot of it, but I hope now that we've seen this full documentary and seen all of Michael's interaction, that that narrative goes away, that he wasn't low key shading him about their vocal performance. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I would even argue, even if he was, it'd be just part of the process. You know what I'm saying? Because they own the song and they killed it. So they must have got it. They got to the part where they got it right and he wouldn't shade no more. I mean, that's just, a, if that's what he was doing, that's just a part of the process. Like, you know, I want you steel sharp and steel. Oh, yeah, I'm on your ass. You know, I mean, that's how he was taught actually right with Joseph. And you know? I guess to reiterate, once he said, <laughs> your ego at the door. Yeah. Like, we I don't think you to Lewis even knew he was singing that song, that portion until he got there. Because they're waiting right. for Right. Right. So he gave give the Huey last second, and you can see like Huey, Huey made a point why the guys that were singing before him kept messing up and had start keep starting over, and he's sitting there like, "Well, shit, man." Every time they get started, I don't never get to sing. It's kind of I'm getting nervous. Like I'm supposed to just yeah. automatically be good, and they done done it three or four times. Joe Quincy can can we sing our parts too? Like and and so you saw both sides pushing back like. I mean, y'all not gonna have me looking crazy. Like, I need my time too. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, you. <laughs> come on, Quincy. So, so in, in other words, it was on a business. This is a business. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> but you know, all of those dudes were top, all the people involved, women and men, top talent. They were all top. They're all the top. And, and so, I'm sorry. This is this is I guess I'm gonna be the Gen X or looking down at the new generation. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. There's not enough top talent today. There just mm -hmm. there just isn't. Mm -hmm. Like you you look at that, we are the world list. You're going 50 deep with top talent. I think I, I could be wrong on that. Maybe it's, well, it, that's a lot. But you look at today, you might go yeah. in 15 and then you get passables, you know. You, I don't want to say Alicia. Alicia Keys is good. You know, John, you get John Legend, you're like, eh. But Girl. they're the top relative to their time. To right. Tom. How looking, you gonna do Tom look, looking back at that old, most of the people there were not the hot. They had already been in the game. Like Tina Turner, obviously, Bob Dylan, Billy Joe, Diana Ross, Kenny Rogers, Ray Charles. Oh. A lot, Paul Simon. A lot of them were older artists. It was and kind of a mix older, older and some of the newer oh. ones, but they weren't like they weren't new artists. They okay. were seasoned oh. legends. So I guess the question would be, who will we grab from maybe the nineties forward? Mary. Who, would, who would be the seasoned ones that you know are the majority of it? Like you said, so Mary, Mary, Tony Braxton, Mariah. <sighs> Tony, Tony Braxton ain't making the cut. Sorry. Wow. What? Sorry. Sorry. That's, I'm gonna let you stand on that. Uh, one. Yeah, I'm you gotta stand on that. One. Baby <laughs> face. Baby face. Okay. He sweat. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're that big enough, but I mean, if you want seasoned veteran, yeah, definitely Keith Sweat. Um, Patty Labelle. Uh, yeah, Patty. Um, what's, what is her name? Anita Baker. That'd be another one. Um. Thinking, what if they got Sade to come in the room? There you go. They got yeah. legends. She ain't ninety. She's eighties, but it'll still work. She would be a legend. She would be considered. Yeah. A, what if she came in on some Bob Dylan? Mm. And it was one of the um, some other legend had to give her and oh, Lauren Hill, music soul child, D'Angelo, yeah, Maxwell, yes. yeah. Lenny Are Kravitz, we, Lenny Kravitz. There's a lot of I'll people. D'Angelo. Maxwell, I'm not music yeah. soul child. Sorry. Yeah, the music soul child. Nah. No. What? You, I had to. You, you can't. I'm not music saying putting it yeah. over. I'm just saying music soul child. Come on, man. That man can sing and he got hits. I'm not saying he can't. Oh, oh. 
Absolutely tasty and JoJo. Boys to men. Boys to men. Wait, what's up with me? Yeah, I'm not mad. Boys to men. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you try, maybe I, I always take Joe to see and boys to men over them, but Drew Hill. Well, first of all, I was gonna say new edition. You're gonna say new edition before Thank you, you say new edition. Stop. Hey, I'm <laughs> trying to bro, I'm trying to remember. I, I, no, I know that's why I said let me just yes, make sure yeah. Yeah. Oh, by yeah, the way, gentlemen, gentlemen, speaking of new edition, when we're off air, I'm going to floss a bit. Continue. Okay. Um <laughs> I I can see SWV and Invogue. They know you you know they're gonna bring the vocal. Mm. I see yeah, Invogue on the SWV. Uh I actually I would I, I I get but I would put Coco over all of them from from SWV Coco from SWV over in vote absolutely absolutely are you kidding me Agreed who in invoking out saying Coco shit I say each individually could De okay. Terry Ellis and absolutely Terry and Don. ladies and gentlemen there you go <laughs> okay come on stop, stop. I'm trying to think who else. There's see, there's a lot. There's actually a lot of people. But hey, fellas, I'm super sorry. I got the family over here. We're gonna do the trip. Oh. We gotta take yeah. off. Great show. Um, if you want to get on the mics tomorrow, let me know. Definitely continue this conversation. All right, man. Thank you. This we'll holler. All right. No, no, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no take doubt. care. All right, man. No um, man, he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, did we say Maxwell? I can see Maxwell. Not say Maxwell. Um, yeah, I mean, and then, uh, and we're just thinking, we're not even looking at like other genres necessarily either. Like, um, but see, the key here though is like who would be the Car it, Garth Brooks or something? I don't know. Garth Brooks, definitely. Dixie Chicks, if you're going to look at the country charts. Yeah. Um, when they did it back then, <clears throat> the pop charts were really. Just stuffed with so many different things. Now, well, it's so that's the same way. I would argue differently. I would say the pop charts were devoid of any R and B groups. Oh, now, where, yes. Where, now the pop charts now are totally different. Pop like, charts a lot of those genres different. don't even exist. That you know, what I'm saying, like back then, uh, and that's the, I think this is the difference of why it was this thing that was spearheaded by, I guess, Harry Belafonte, Lionel Richie, and them. It would have been quite different if it was a more pop of the time versus, uh, because a lot of these groups I don't think would have intersected with each other. I don't think pop would have considered having a, a, a Ray Charles. Hmm. It, it, it may not have seemed like it was a, a good fit or it's something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, where them, I think, because of who's involved, and he, you know, he said at the outset we wanted to have black people or a black clause. I think they were making a point to have some of these artists that probably wouldn't have been considered for if it was if it was framed from other another genre's perspective. Maybe um, it could have been more of a rock thing or something, and maybe only had a few soulful or whatever singers involved. But I think they had a mixture. On purpose, like you, you got country. that's the big difference between for me. That's the biggest difference between USA for Africa and Band Aid. Mm -hmm. Band Aid was like, Who's here? Okay, we're all here, let's go. This came across as really more calculated, you know, now, yep. which I get. I get that because your goal is to make money, and if you put the hot people at that time. Right. In one room, it's going to sell. I get that. And with Band Aid, they just happen to be over there. Right. It's sell so in town. Give them a call. And they just did their thing and mm -hmm. word spread and people just showed up. You know, yeah. it, it was more organic and spur of the moment than this one was, which was, again, not ripping it, but it was definitely calculated to. to, to Look this they way. wonder, yeah, they, it, you know, it's, I'm glad you said that because when you think about it, you, you, when they mentioned uh, Prince in the documentary, they were like, he was one of the top. He was one of the top in the game. Top, then, yeah. top of the game. And of course, if you're trying to raise as much money as possible, 
You want the heavy hitters who are going to bring as much attention to it as possible. And that's why I think it was great because I think everyone sort of knew that. Like, yeah. well, they want me involved because of what I bring and I bring my tribe and people. And the, the point is to bring relief to these people. Well, then, yeah, we're going to get the most relief if we can get all the heavy hitters. Just come in the room. Just stand there so we can have the, the look so we can get the people involved. That's really what this is about. When you get, because that's what I say, when you're getting focused on, well, who wrote the song or how does it sound? If that's your concern, then this ain't, this ain't for you. It ain't for you. This is about raising money for these people to eat. <laughs> and the thing is, the blueprint for that, that premise, you could go arguably, you see, look, Michael Jackson did that. It's like, how can I make this bigger? Call Eddie Van Halen. That exposed him to a whole new group of people who mm -hmm. bought that album because of that solo. And you yeah. take that same premise with these cats. Okay, I need to have Paul Simon in here. He he hits a certain button. Springsteen's right. Devil brings his people in, and yeah. it's it and it's sold. Yep. Get get the rock guys in here, get the country, get everything. It's conspicuous so not because she was at Live Aid, really did her thing, but she wasn't at, at this. Maybe yeah. schedules didn't line up. I don't know. And this goes on to spawn even more different yeah. types of these types of yeah. things. Uh, Self destruction, well. all that, man. Oh, uh, yeah, right. God, I would love to see a video on that one. <laughs> that would be none of these happen without, without this, arguably. Yeah, because um, this really put that in people's heads to do this. Yeah. I, I I actually uh one last thing I'll say about this documentary. I I miss a world where this was possible. Agreed. And this may, you know, what I mean, just just the fact that people decided they wanted to do something and help people on this level. I and the fact that it was played on all these radio stations at the same time and it's a good cause, it's tr and they're trying to put this. I just I miss where we could do that, and it wasn't excuse me, so people are so cynical and Oh, I, I hate that about now. Like, you know, it feels like every time they tried to do something after this, like this, it was always met with, oh, it's just corny. And then it's like, well, dude, it's not about that. You know, it's <laughs> corny, so what? We're trying to do so. Well, then what, what should we do to help everybody then? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, God damn. Um, nah, so one, I missed that. There was one done not too long ago. Uh, it was a cover of What's Going On. Remember that one? You're right. I vaguely remember this, yes. You know, they had that one. And I, and I watched it, and I wanted to like it. I wanted to so right. bad, but it just it just felt flat. You know? Yeah. And it's the thing is, and I kind of agree with you, I wish we could still say, like, yeah, that didn't really work for me, but I went ahead and donated it anyway. So I think we get so caught up in how we feel about it. Like, okay, what was the point they were doing this for really don't take your take your feelings out of it like it's not really yeah. Yeah. we're trying to help people like we're just go on and get the money yeah, yeah you don't like it great but go on and put the money <laughs> so uh, that's the only thing i wish we could kind of get back to that a little bit remember um i was telling my daughter about this remember hands across america <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> it, was, it was so many kind of goofy things that would have everyone holding hands from one end of america to the other would hold hands like some of y'all young folks may think I think I sound crazy. Go look that up. Like that was a real event, you know. There was this one portion. This there's this one dude in the middle of nowhere, and they had mm -hmm. like these long ribbons in each of his hands, which would contact or connect to people who are actually oh. holding hands. And so they 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 pulled it off. <laughs> That's awesome. I love stuff like that. It's just kind of goofy, but it's fun. Um, any last things we want to say about? Yeah, this? yeah, I do a couple things. Um, I don't know if you saw it yet, but there's a Run DMC documentary out. I haven't seen it, but I have heard about it. I loved it. I, hands down. Are you I, watching? I've already seen it. It was great. It's good. Oh, okay, it was great. And I remember when I watched Live Aid live. Now I don't know if this was an MTV thing. Or another one of the broadcasters, but I'm watching it. I'm from between the, the the London show and the Philadelphia show. Mm -hmm. On the Philadelphia show, and, <laughs> and I know it's not fair to pick on this guy, but Mark Goodman 
who, who we pick on for other reasons, from MTV <laughs> was saying, all right, Run DMC is coming out. And then you see DMC and they're doing the opening of whatever the first song was. We didn't see it because Mark Goodman cuts in. Okay, Sting is taking the stage in, in London. We're cutting there. And they cut to the stage where Sting is. What do you see? An empty stage. He ain't even out there yet. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Come on. Now, I didn't know anything about Run DMC back then. I knew no- I had heard, you know, bits and pieces. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, let's see what these dudes can do. Not not today. Yank, you get to watch your empty stage at, at Wembley Arena. I was not mm-hmm. pleased. I was <laughs> right. not pleased. Yeah, I do I do want to check out that documentary though. It's, it's it not on Peacock or something. It's on Peacock, yes. I don't know if I have that one. Man, yeah. ah, I gotta get all these accounts just to watch these shows. <laughs> but yeah, okay. I have a recommendation. I mean, there was so much to it. Uh, there was a lot I didn't know about it, but okay. they whew, it was very, very well done. Now I want to see it. There was uh DMC, he was on uh the drink champs. Yeah, like a week ago, I watched the most of that, and he was talking about the documentary. One thing yeah, I love DMC, DMC, man. I was a love. I, was a DMC. DMC. I yeah. didn't know about DMC was he is a serious rock dude like me. Yeah, I had no clue. I'm like, okay, DMC, we can hang, man. We can Comic hang book out. guy, too. Comic book guy and a rock guy, like that's my guy right there. Mm-hmm. Big okay. time comic book guy too. I didn't, I didn't know that either. I think he has a comic out now. He, he I does. know he's done some in the past. He does, yeah. All right, man. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen this documentary, I definitely say it's well worth the watch. Um, just great to see artists working together without you know all the other stuff, just them. Um, I love the fact that they did this all in one night. Uh, mm. The fact that they filmed it which it was a rare thing to do back then that they filmed it as they were doing. I can't imagine how much that adds to the process. Like let alone, you got to perform in front of the greatest artists <laughs> going on right now. And then there's cameras all over the place and lights and, you know, all the people holding the mics and all these people behind technical people. And you have to listen to the producer and perform. That's just the, only the people who are seasoned in knowing that can operate in that type of environment. And there's, and, and there's no auto tune. No, you know what I mean, like you got to sing, and you got to sing it over and over till you get it right. And we ain't got much time. And Stevie Wonder standing right over there. Diana Ross standing right over there. Smokey, Bruce Springsteen. It's your turn. Like, whew, you better be ready. <laughs> the one thing just popped into my head too, because I thought if they did it today. People wouldn't do it like this. Everybody right. would be like dialing it in from their own studio. Right. Let me go ahead and punch this in. You no. stream, let's stream in live. He's coming in live. Yeah. He's gonna see. yeah, it wouldn't be the same. No, it's not the same, man. Well, send me the file. I'll put in my thing and I'll right. send you the file back. No, no, no. Some things need to be analog and just, you know, done with one, in one shot. Got to be in the room, man. Yeah. Gotta make it happen. Awesome. And that was the point Lionel was saying, like, you know, it, it, salute to Prince and all. Man, you got it. It's about being in the room. And and if and if the if the artist isn't, if that doesn't work for that artist, cool. Then cool. you know what? We'll get you next time. Or what, you know, it, it is what it is. There's no, no shame. And that's why I don't have any real shame for Prince, because like that wasn't his it, that wasn't Prince at that time. You know, no. that's not how his get down was. Now, if you go to 2004 at the Hall of Fame, you'd have done it then. Yeah, that's something different. But even then, actually, I was talking to Tobias about this yesterday. And shout out to Tobias. Oh, what's up, Tobias? Yeah, he was like, he he brought that up to as a point to be like, even then, he was still allowed to do his own thing at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing. He they let him go. Let go on, do your thing. You know, gave him his lane to do his thing. It wasn't necessarily incorporated into what they was doing. It was at a certain point. Man, the floor is yours. You got because that's his style. Like you, you, he's a solitary thing. He's gonna get on there and go crazy. You know what I'm saying? And and so even then, he still allowed his space to shine, which maybe it wouldn't have worked walking in the room with all those people yeah. at that time. Yeah. And I would I would throw out there to me years later, he has his own We Are the World uh with a little song called Graffiti Bridge. 
in my opinion. <laughs> like it's the same kind of corniness to it. It's got the multiple vocalists uh, going in, singing a song about the world and a better place. So, you know, so it's the same type of deal to me. You know, uh, anyway, with that that uh, Hall of Fame performance, you know, I've read so many articles about it. You know, they did the rehearsal. Prince was there, obviously. <clears throat> he didn't play. He's like, okay, how many bars do you want me to take? I got him. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. That was it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, okay. And the funny thing is, I think it was Tom Petty's lead guitarist who played the solo during rehearsal and mm -hmm. thought he was just going to do his thing. They're like, yeah, man, no. No, just you... <laughs> You go over here. And the look on George Harrison's son's face said it all when they're when they're doing it. That kid yeah. was just beaming, like, let it go, man. Rip, rip. Yeah. And, and everyone got out of the way, like, let Prince do his thing. Yeah, yeah. This is we love when you when you're in your bag. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and he gave him the full bag, like a couple of bags. Whole deal. Yeah. Like, <laughs> So yeah, yeah man, we'll, absolutely. What we do over here, man. Yeah, fantastic. One more thing I want to say before we leave yeah. USA completely. I was listening to because Tina Turner was a big part of this, obviously. Mm -hmm. I was listening to the Ike and Tina Turner set from 1969 at Madison Square Garden, where they were for the Rolling Stones, and mm -hmm. it was like a small set. It was like four or five songs, no, five or six songs. None of them were originals. None of them, but they just blistered through this. They were intensely good. I didn't remember them being that good when I was little, but they woo, and you could you could hear it. Tina was Tina was gonna leave anyway. Now, regardless of I being a shit, which she was, she was she couldn't have been contained in that group. Wow. She was that good. She really was, and they <laughs> took um, what's that song? Do you like good music? Yeah, yeah. We sold music. Tore that up. I'm like, okay, you win. It's yours. It was amazing. That's why I bought that that CD for for that performance. I I, I never heard it before. I'm like, let's see what, what I can tell you. Never heard it. Man, they were real. Which which performance is this again? This is 1969. Uh, it's on the Roll Rolling Stones. Get your yayas out album. <laughs> And they have a BB King set on there too. Wow! And of course, BB is BB. He don't do his thing. But I can Tina Turner that their opening set was included, and it was just flame. It was along the lines. If you have you heard like early James Brown live recordings, a few, yeah. It was like that. Okay. That type of intensity. I'm like, whoa! And shout out to Alan Leeds because he got me. You know, checking out these James Brown the Apollo uh, CDs, mm -hmm. and I got one from from Dallas in like '68. Whoo! Smoke James man. brought the fire, man. Y'all, y'all don't know now. James <laughs> brought it. You youngins, you have no idea. Everybody <laughs> stole from James. Everybody. Actually, he was just yeah. You don't mom. hear much about James Brown's music. I guess this is further on in time, I guess, because I remember like in the late 80s, early 90s, there were so many James Brown reissues and, and I was picking them up. Like We were actually buying them and like, whoa, like discovering all this different stuff. Uh, and of course, I mean, that went on to shape hip hop for many years, like built on the backs of that shit. Well, James, all right. some, some fierce, man. Woo. Well, hopefully, you know, uh, Going down the line 10 years from now or something, you know, younger people are going to be, even more people are going to be checking out some Prince stuff and be like, yo, what is this Prince thing all about? Like, yo, this dude is, this is some dope shit in here. Like, let me dive, start diving into this. Hopefully. All right, man, we're going to get up out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, we definitely hope you guys enjoyed this conversation. Shout out to uh, Aunt Pooh, had to leave us early. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, suggest or share this uh, out with other people out there in, in the world. Uh, Big Sexy and Sax, sir, thank you for uh, dropping in with us, dropping your knowledge as usual. And uh, with that, work it like a job. We'll see you next time. Peace.